So that's me and my dad on my graduation day in 1997, standing outside the Heath Hospital. I couldn't have predicted at this point that I would have ended up with a career, in fact, so different from where it started. I was interested in medicine from a very early age. I was, I was fascinated by science generally, but it was really biology and then particularly human biology which fascinated me most. I did have an amazing book, which I think I had as an eight-year-old, and it was a pop-up human anatomy book. I just have really fond memories of it, and I think that that got me slightly obsessed with anatomy at a very early age. I know that early on in my career, I did have this problem with feeling that I was always aiming for something but never getting there. In fact, when I became a doctor, I was still training and I hadn't really got to where I wanted to be. The realisation that actually I could be doing something valuable in the here and now, whilst having the aim of doing something in the future, that's fine to have that aim. Make sure that you are doing your best in the present, I think is such an important thing. And it's, it's about fulfilment and satisfaction. Don't panic if you don't have your career mapped out. I've spent quite a lot of time in the Natural History Museum over the years. When you walk into the, the hall, uh, and you see the enormous Diplodocus um, standing there. That, that is a real iconic uh, moment. And then you walk past the Diplodocus and up the stairs and you come face to face with Darwin. There's a fantastic corridor with um, lots of fossils of ichthyosaurs and you walk all the way along with lots of ichthyosaurs swimming beside you. Um, several of them collected by Mary Anning, of course, down in Dorset. And then you get to the end of that corridor and there's a giant sloth. It's fantastic. If my boss hadn't left Bristol University, then the opportunity to continue teaching anatomy wouldn't have arisen. There are these serendipitous moments, but there's also grabbing opportunities when they arise. I suppose you have to be brave sometimes, and you have to turn around and go, is this still right for me? Am I enjoying it? Can I do something else? I think one of the really exciting things at the moment is that we seem to be breaking down boundaries between traditional disciplines. So before, when we had scientists of particular flavours working very much on their own in, in their individual labs, we're, we're breaking down those barriers and, and bringing people together. And it's not just about bringing scientists together, actually. It's about bringing people from all sorts of disciplines together. And I think that's where we're getting some really, really exciting new research and technology emerging. In terms of my academic career, um, I suffered several setbacks and you know, I think anybody does, in, in, in probably in any career. But I got to the middle of my PhD and had a major wobble and nearly changed the whole subject of my PhD in the middle, which I think is a very common thing to do. Um, and luckily all my advisors um, advised me, you can think that you're making the right decision and you've made up your mind but you really do need to talk to people. Whatever you end up doing, even if, you, even if it isn't your um, supreme passion, um, throw yourself into it, absolutely throw yourself into it. And don't be too worried if you don't have a clear idea of where you're going to be in five years' time. It's a good idea to be aiming towards something, but don't panic if you don't have your career mapped out for years into the future, because things will change. The environment around you will change. And be brave enough to allow your career to take you off in interesting new directions.